The Rolex 24 at Daytona is a long race. It starts at 1.40 p.m. on Saturday and ends 24 hours later on Sunday at 1.40 p.m. When the green flag drops, it starts a grueling test of endurance, reliability. But in some way, the green flag also represents a bit of an end cap for the teams that have spent almost two years of non-stop work to design, build, and test the new Mustang GT3. It's been a long road to get here, developing and improving every aspect of the car to be reliable, fast, durable, and to endure a race like Daytona, like the 24 hours of Le Mans, or the 12 hours of Sebring. Qualifying for the Rolex 24 at Daytona starts the week before the race, with the roar before the 24, a dedicated testing and qualifying session that sets the pace for the next eight days. The Roar also sees a new customer team for the first time, with Proton competition entered in the GTD class in their number 55 Ford Mustang GT3. The first time they rolled this car was Friday. Very impressed with how quickly they come along and, and the drivers have come along quite naturally. It's really cool for me to drive this car here at Daytona. I mean, American car, I'm an American driver, so for me it's a dream come true. And, I mean, it's just my second day in the car and already I'm really, really impressed. Yeah, the Mustang has been great to us. You know, we, we had a nice welcome with the car. The uh, car looks amazing. We're coming here to Daytona, driving that beast. It's a real pleasure. We work throughout the roar now to dial in the car, get the set of rides, and we're in a really happy place now with the car. And we're sharing everything, so it's basically the same as running one team. You know, I, I think it's great to have three of us, three different cars, working on completely different, sometimes, directions. At the end of the day, we can sit down, talk about it, and make the best package come race ready. At the end of the roar, the Ford Multimatic Motorsports Mustang GT3's number 65 and 64 qualified 9th and 13th in GTD Pro, while the number 55 Proton entry qualified 15th in GTD. It is a 24 hour race, so where you start is definitely unlikely to be where you finish. To finally be here with a team that's as strong as it is, you know, six drivers in the factory team plus a customer car. Everyone's excited to have us here and to have Mustang back in the top series of uh, sports car racing on the world stage is very, very exciting. The Rolex 24 at Daytona. First session of the uh, official race week. So we're into the final sort of tweaks and changes to all three cars across the two factory cars and the GTD car. We're quite different on the setup. In our car now, we're basically back to back in stiff setup and a soft setup. The one thing is the weather now is a lot warmer. That's really going to affect tire wear. This might be the warmest uh, 24 hour that I've seen that I've been to. The idea here is to try and chase the racetrack a little bit and see what, what we need to do setup wise. Lap time should be way slower, uh, just because you have less power, less downforce, and less grip, just all because of temperatures. When the green flag drops here, it places a marker in time, the first direct measure of its performance against the world. But no matter what happens, this is the first race ever for the Mustang GT3. I mean, if you're not excited anymore, you should be here, honestly. I'm really, really happy to see everybody coming here. Drivers from all over the globe, from all categories of motorsport, are ready to take on one of the toughest tests in motorsports anywhere on the planet. A 
few hours into the race, the number 65 Ford Mustang GT3 was forced to enter the pits for repairs to its rear deck lid, which did not survive the turbulent air. into the 55, caused both of them to have diffuser damage. Both had to pit for noses, diffusers. Ford factory driver, Dennis Olson. Dennis, things seem to be going so well for you, but now the car is back in again. Marco got hit on the last restart. We lost the rear light, so we're all gonna try to uh, change the diffuser, but hopefully there is no damage on the center floor so we can connect it again. 55 retired from that, and you know, 64 lost a lot of laps. Tantos in the car for a couple stints, so about eight hours in the car, which is about is what we expected. Bound to happen in the first race, you know, to have something you know, not go perfectly. But I will say the rest of the car has gone really good. To finish this race would be, would be big for us, be big for Ford, to hold it out everybody. Just to see that you know, all the parts will go the distance. Two hours left to go in the race, the number 65 Ford Mustang GT3 is forced to retire due to a mechanical issue with the rear wing. At the end of this long event, one Mustang GT3, the number 64 car, endured the challenge, finishing sixth in the GTD Pro in the debut for the new car. Racing is a horror sometimes. It's the toughest race of the IMSA schedule to start with a brand new car. We came here to finish. We came here to learn. And we definitely did both. And it's, uh, I think, a testament to the, to the people to keep pressing forward through the race. And I think at the finish, there was, there was a lot of relief, a lot of smiles. But it just builds the team, makes us even stronger to keep going forward together. I'm obviously over the moon to get that first finish and for the 64 to run reliably throughout. Clearly, there's a lot of work to do. But, as mad as it sounds for the biggest race of the year, I feel like this was our warm-up race and our season will start at Sebring. When the team first started this challenge years ago with drawings and plans, they knew it wasn't going to be easy. They knew that racing is hard. Racing can be unfair. It breaks cars, it breaks people, and it breaks hearts. But they've raced their first marathon. They've accepted the challenge of one of the toughest motorsport events in the world head-on. And they will be ready for the next one. Evolved. Stronger always moving forward. This is the end of the beginning of the development story of the Mustang GT3, and it's the start of a global program of competition. <laughs>